Okay. This escapade takes place in the Old Bailey courtroom where the defendant is none other than Sholmes himself, and the charge is a most mysterious murder. Ryanosuke naturally advocates for the defense against the unflappable Reaper, Lord Van Zeeks, but Sholmes' testimony calls the true culprit of the crime into question. The final one! Date unknown. The, the old Bailey courtroom. This is a weird trial considering we have no jurors, too. This court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. This is a most extraordinary case of murder, counsels. I assume I may proceed? Yes, my lord. The defense is ready. At your discretion, my lord. Very well, I hereby call on the prosecution to introduce the case. The incident in question took place two days ago, late at night, when the ground was blanketed with snow. The location of the incident was the residence of the accused, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Indeed. The now famous address of the number 221B Baker Street, was it? The address may have enjoyed fame once, my lord, but will henceforth endure infamy for this grim crime. Y yes sir well put. The victim, a certain Madame Rosie, was found axfixated at the accused's sofa, on the accused's sofa. My word. Objection. But it's unclear as to whether the victim was actually killed in the defendant's suite or not. After all, when Mr. Sholmes left the room for only a brief moment, Madame Rosie somehow vanished herself out of his room completely. Vanished herself, Council? The victim? Quite true, my lord. There is but one adjoining door between my drawing room and the kitchen. Uh, yet having brewed some tea in the kitchen, I returned to find the room completely empty. There was nobody else present. Ordinarily, my fellow lodger, Iris, would have been at home. However, on the day in question, she had been invited to a meeting of a scientific society in the city. I'm afraid you have a propensity for exaggeration, sir. You claim the victim vanished herself, but really, it seems to me entirely plausible that she chose to leave via the main entrance to your suite. As it happens, my lord, the door to the accuser's room was locked at the time, from the inside. Very true, Inspector. As such, I can say with considerable surety that the victim did not leave via my front door. But, but what about, um... Aha, yes, she could have snuck out through the window. Objection! The windows in the room were not locked, it's true. And the victim had the opportunity. However... However, there was snow all around the building outside, and not a patch of it had been disturbed. Would my learned friend care to explain how the victim could have left without leaving a trail? So the victim, Madame Rosie, somehow vanished from the scene before she was killed. Ugh. Naturally, I was alarmed by the sudden disappearance of my guest. So I summoned this gentleman, who resides in the attic, ab attic room above my own, and we took a cab to Scotland Yard. I can confirm that the defendant called for me, and I saw his suite on his way downstairs. And yes, I'm quite sure it was empty, just as Mr. Sholmes has said. When we reached the yard, this very detective happened to be there. Ah, well, yes, you see, I was just in my office for a while, having got back from some, uh, important business. Important government business? No. <laughs> and then, having explained the situation to the inspector, we traveled back to Baker Street together. At that time, there were no footprints in the snow around the building, other than the ones we'd made. Do I take it then, Counsel, that you personally witnessed the scene where the incident took place? No, my lord. I went straight up to bed in my own room in the attic. Inspector Gregson, however, was met with the most blood-curdling sight. On Mr. Sholmes' sofa, the vanished Madame Rosie, motionless. Hmm. So the victim was already dead when you discovered her, Inspector? No, my lord. Not dead, but not far off it. She mustered all her remaining strength to say these dying words. 
that rotter, Sholmes, will be the death of me. Ah, yes, I overheard that remark at the time, too, delivered in a rasping voice, full of malice. No! Those words indeed proved to be her last. The victim expired moments later, there on the sofa. The cause of death was identified as damage to the respiratory tract as a result of strangulation. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Pray, does the accused dare to contest the inspector's account? Certainly not. In fact, the inspector has done an unusually fine job of summarizing the salient points. Sholmes will be the death of me. Damning departing words indeed. In her final moments, the victim named her killer. You, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Objection. But the defendant had no reason to take the victim's life. Perhaps you could tell the court, Mr. Sholmes, who exactly this Madame Rosie was? Ah yes, of course. Did I never mention her to you? I extended an invitation to her that evening. Though she is lo loquacious in the extreme, the most trivial of matters quickly became a quarrel. I was only too pleased to leave her presence to make tea. Great. It would appear, then, that the accused did in fact have a motive for silencing his heuristic guest. Permanently. Heuristic? Putting that tenuous motive aside, what about the other mysterious surround mystery surrounding the case? Ah, I'm inclined to agree with the defense. There remains a number of inscrutable details. The victim's alleged disappearance and subsequent reappearance, leaving no trail of footprints, for example. That's right. The crime described by the prosecution could never have happened. Yet the victim named the accused in her dying breath. It seems to me that my learned friend has overlooked a significant detail here. Nonsense. What have I overlooked? The man in the dock, the so-called great detective, all too frequently makes the following bold claim. There is no crime beyond the realms of possibility, no mystery beyond my powers of reasoning. Uh. So, Mr. Sholmes, you will have no difficulty in explaining how the crime thus described could have taken place. Therefore, I propose a toast to the great detective upholding his name. But of course, were I to put my mind to the matter, the crime would immediately appear to be, to all present, to be entirely feasible. To all present. Please, Mr. Sholmes, whose side are you on? All you need to say is, no, even I can't think of a way that a crime like that could have been committed. Ah, oh, but Sholmes is a detective. That's not how he's going to resolve it. Let the accused's admission be noted by the court. Though the crime may appear impossible to us mortals of inferior mental capacity, this man alone claims to know exactly how it was done. Hold it! Now, hold on. That's a very fragile... Thank you, counsels. I believe I've heard more than enough to proceed to my adjudication. The accused great detect did, in some inscrutable matter, willfully murder the victim, Madam Rosie. I therefore find the defendant... Guilty! Okay. Let this man be taken from this courtroom and, in some equally inscrutable matter, be sanctioned for his crimes. Court is adjourned. Uh, well, I guess we're not seeing Sholmes for the remaining, uh, game. <laughs> not a whole no. My lord, please. The truth about the myster mystery surrounding this case are known to another besides the great detective. What's this? On my word, Mr. Naruto, you are coming along wonderfully. You've deduced a fundamental truth about this case, I believe. Which would be, detective? That the truth to this case is known. Only to the true culprit, obviously. Is that not so, Gregson? Eh? What? Well, uh, I suppose, yes. You don't mean... Are you suggesting, Mr. Sholmes, that you have an idea as to what actually happened that night? 
An idea, my dear fellow. I could explain the entire incident from start to finish with not a single detail omitted. Objection! It seems the detective has failed to grasp the situation. Pray, Mr. Reaper, which of us has truly failed to grasp the situation, I wonder? Then answer me this. You claim that prior to the incident, the victim suddenly vanished without a trace from your room. If so, how exactly did Madame Rosie disappear? Why, naturally, via the window. It was ajar, after all. But that can't be. The room is a whole story above street level. And anyway, no prints were found in the snow. There are a number of ways one could avoid leaving tracks in the snow, surely. S such as... Such as... Flying, for instance. Um... A fatuous notion. And to where do you propose the victim flew, Mr. Sholmes? Is it not entirely plain? To the culprit's abode, of course. For having left my suite, there is clearly... This is, that is clearly where Madame Rosie was murdered. Take a moment to consider the cruel irony, if you will. By her own volition, she flew directly to her death. Objection! Do you forget, Detective? The victim's corpse was discovered on your own sofa. No doubt, because her killer carried her back there. But... Well, what about the lack of footprints in the snow again, then? There just weren't any. Other than our own, from when we returned home ourselves. If by our footprints you refer to our own and mine, you are quite right. But there were those of another. On the night in question, there was one other person who could have conveyed the victim to my sofa. What? Good gracious, to whom you refer to, sir? A man whose somewhat unavailing presence at the scene of the crime would be would be questioned by no one. Unavailing? Uh, you don't mean... Indeed I do. A man who hastened to the scene directly upon learning of the incident at Scotland Yard. Namely... You, Inspector Gregson. Eh? When you arrived at my address on Baker Street, you were carrying the half-dead Madame Rosie with you. You waited for a suitable opportunity and then laid the victim on my sofa. He did. What? He did what? Excuse me. Objection. But we were with the inspector when he arrived. How could he possibly have been carrying the victim? We would have noticed. My dear fellow, a most obvious answer presents itself, does it not? The inspector is rarely, if ever, without his overcoat. The victim was simply conveyed in one of its many pockets. Uh... Who's the victim now? <laughs> alright, I- oh, alright, this is- this is- okay. I fail to see what makes this detective great, but I can say one thing with great certainty. A human body cannot fit into the pocket of an overcoat. Yes, sir, I'd, uh... I would agree with that, but I don't think we're dealing with a person. I believe you may have fallen foul of a rather significant misapprehension. What? Madame Rosie was not a human. I beg your pardon? Um, Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Naruto. Something troubles you, perhaps. Whatever gives you that idea. Exactly what sort of creature was Madame Rosie? Uh, something that can fly. Is it not apparent already? A parakeet, of course. Oh, it's a parakeet now. Not a parrot, just a parakeet. I mean, it's still a parrot, but also it's specified now. Huh? A most self-conceited specimen, in fact. A parakeet? She was an incessant talker, I must say. Her matter was quite intolerable at times. Want to turn every conversation to a quarrel, I thought to strangle the creature on more than one occasion. You had a quarrel... with a parakeet? <laughs> but of course, why else would she have chosen to fly from my window so uncourtly that night, that evening? To the abode of the inspector here beside me, no less. To Inspector Gregson's abode? But... why? Because that was the parakeet's home, naturally. What are you... The inspector was called away from town for some days, so it was arranged that I would look after the bird. But it would appear that she was overcome with a sudden yearning for her keeper. 
this prompt thus prompting her flight from my comfortable suite to the inspector's office at Scotland Yard. Well, Gregson, I believe it's high time you explain. Give us your account of what happened that night, sparing no details, of course. This is... this is... <laughs> Inspector Gregson? This is just... This is literally just an homage to cross-examining a parrot, I swear to God. It was an accident. I got back from being away that evening, you see? I just walked through the door of my office. I never imagined Madame Rosie would be on her way back to the yard as well. That bird is loyal. That bird, like, as I, I guess it sensed Gregson was back in town and was just like, I must fly back to my human. I slammed the door shut behind me, just as she was trying to fly through it. So Madame Rosie, she got sandwiched between the door and the frame and fell to the floor. Oh no, never to move again, because of me. Gregson! Gregson! Well, I never. I had to do something, and just when I was trying to think of a plan, you fellas arrived talking about some incident at Baker Street. Uh, I had to hide Madame Rosie in a hurry, so I stuffed her in my coat pocket and got in the cab with the pair of you. Gregson! What could possibly have motive you to, motivated you to behave in such a manner, Inspector? Lord Strongheart, sir. What? Lord Strongheart? Please tell me I didn't hear that right. It was the Lord Chief Justice who asked me to look after the bird in the first place. She'd been living with the pigeons at the Supreme Court until then. But apparently the, um, other birds had started to pick on her. Oh no! So for the past six months or so, I've been caring for her in my office at the yard. I see. If anything happened to that bird, just imagine. No pay and no time off for the rest of my career. You mark my words, that's what's gonna happen. That's why I... well... Gregson! But the victim's dying words, Inspector. The court heard earlier that Madame Rosie spoke the name of her assailant on her deathbed. That rotter, Jones, will be the death of me. Indeed she did. Quite uncalled for, wouldn't you agree? But those words are your true feelings, are they not, Inspector? Ugh. Clearly you speak of me often at your office at the yard, in this disparaging manner. A manner that the Mary Parakeet took much delight in mimicking. Well, come on, I mean... Have you read this month's edition of Rance Magazine, eh? I'm... I'm... What? Sorry! Is it really for the Rance Magazine? This is all absolutely true. <laughs> damaged! Everyone damaged! Hey! The first time we see Baroque outside of the courtroom is in this Rance Magazine. Something wrong, Lord Vanzix. Hmm? That... Uh, no. Nothing. I almost drifted off for a moment there. It's hard not to drift off when you've been kept waiting three hours already. I wonder if we'll manage to meet with Lord Strongheart at all today. We have... we may have to deliver the report on the Windybank case that he asked for on another day. <laughs> Tell me, Inspector, what became of that bird? Well, uh, see, I thought it was all a dream until he said this, and I'm like, it wasn't a dream? Uh, Madame Rosie, you mean? She had a narrow escape, but she's still alive. I delivered her back here long, long ago, actually, on Lord Strongheart's orders. He's hoping the pigeons will accept her now. It was something of a shock to hear that she had been crushed in the doorway of your office. You know, there's a thing at the end of this that makes me wonder if it's some kind of symbolism with the bird. Especially as we were all under the misapprehension that Madame Rosie was a person. Uh, sorry about that. It was Lord Strongheart's demand that... Ah, uh, good, you're here. 
I apologize for my tardiness. I'm exactly three hours, 24 minutes, and 57 seconds late. Are you saying they just bought another parakeet? <laughs> oh no, my lord, oh no! No, no, please, don't trouble yourself. Nothing gives us greater pleasure than standing here doing nothing for hours on end. <laughs> Heartening. So, let's hear it then. Your report. The Windy Bank trial is concluded, but this is far from over. It seems that dark, far eastern lawyer and I have some shared destiny. We will meet again. Of that I have no doubt. Did you see that, Lord Van Diggs? Did you? Madame Rosie went flying off among the pigeons there. Happy as Larry she was. Really, Inspector. You must be relieved. The one time we also write, we also talk in Van Zee's perspective, too. Okay, that should give me an accolade, right? Right? Yeah! Thank you, Ace Aficiando. Okie dokie. I think it's the same bird. Like, it's one of those things where I feel like this game would play it off where, like, if it wasn't the same bird, it would be very obvious to them to be like, 